Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Mickey Meyer, the owner of the Show Me Snakes Reptile Expo. And today we're talking about local venomous snakes. So what are the local venomous snakes in the area? Uh, Missouri has five species of venomous snakes. Uh, we have the timber rattlesnake, copperhead is what's most common. We have the masasagua, we have the uh, pygmy rattlesnake, and then we have the uh, cottonmouth. Those are our five. And how many of them do you have? Uh, I have four of them here right now. We are not permitted to keep masasaguas on our breeder's permit, so. And we could put in some clips as we uh, talk about them a bit more. But what kind of environments do most of these snakes prefer? Uh, what do they prefer? Uh, just anything like this. They, they, they prefer to be hidden and hanging out. Like bushes, logs. Bushes, logs, rocks, uh, glades, cliffs tree trunks so all sorts of variety yeah steps they like to hide under people's stairs <laughs> so one thing we want to like touch big on in this episode is what do people do and how do they interact with some of these venomous animals because obviously people are kind of scared of snakes that's really a given so what are some of the common areas that people will probably run into some of these venomous animals uh, they can really run into them anywhere you know they, they uh, show up at uh, <clears throat> So we build so many houses and buildings that, that we're uh, taking over their environment. So really you could find them anywhere. People, uh, we get emails and calls. People are finding them in uh, their kids' playground equipment, around the barbecue pits, under this, their steps of their houses. I mean, they're really all, everywhere that we They're are. all over the place, yeah. Because they're kind of turning our, our homes into theirs. Because we're building, like, as you say, like stairs and like flower pits and barbecue pits that's hiding places for them now. Right, and really I think the best thing we can do is learn how to cohabitate with these animals because we are taking their environments and destroying them. For lack of a better way of putting it, that's pretty much what we're doing. Yeah. So what do you think people should do uh, when they encounter such an animal? Uh, the biggest thing that we always tell everybody is just don't touch them. Uh, if, even if you know what it is, just don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Uh, I know we tell thousands of kids every year, just turn around and walk away. So we've got a whole generation of kids learning not to touch, <laughs> not to touch snakes. It's great. And especially if, um, with the increase in size of the uh, expo, you have a lot more people that you're reaching out to. And a lot of kids go to the show all the time. So it's just the more kids that hear about it, the more they're going to spread to people that they know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's cool because we're, we're teaching a lot of people how to act when they encounter this. So a lot of the kids already know our, our safety protocols before we even get to go meet them. <laughs> so, uh, as, as more people are like learning about reptiles, they're gonna understand that you don't have to kill them all. Right, yeah, we're, we're not hearing that so much anymore. A few years ago, uh, we would hear, oh, my dad cuts the head off with a shovel or whatever, but we're not hearing that so much anymore, so. Uh, all the work that everybody's doing is, is getting out there and we're teaching people not to kill them. So your videos and everything that everybody else does is it's really, really educating the public. About and uh, some people have a hard time actually properly identifying these snakes. So what are some other snakes that get mixed in uh, or confused as a venomous snake? Uh, a lot of the time, so like everybody thinks that black rat snakes are copperheads and uh, cotton mouths, and they don't look anything alike. Like that. We just saw yeah, those two. Nothing alike. I've, I've got a bunch of black rat snakes that live back around the barn, and they're, they're nowhere close. But uh, I think a lot of people, they're just, they're afraid, and they see a snake, and they think it's venomous immediately. And uh, sometimes, like with the timber rail snake, the copper, they have kind of the angular head. So if they take a quick glance at it and they see a somewhat angular head, which most snakes kind of have a somewhat angled, angled head, Right. Uh, they're going to assume it's venomous. So Missouri, we have, in, in this area, we have mainly pit vipers. So they do have the venom glands back here. Uh, the only thing is that the, uh, the Nerodia, the water snakes, they, they'll, they'll flatten their heads out like that too to, to mimic that. You know, that's something that we've learned how to do over the years, is to mimic venomous snakes' behavior, so uh, rattle in the tail and everything like 
thing. That's why we just tell people not to touch stuff. <laughs> and that kind of leads into my next question. Is like, why is it beneficial to have these kind of snakes around your home? Okay, so like a, a timber rattlesnake, uh, they'll, they'll just cruise through the woods and they'll eat moles and mice and, and rodents all over the place. These rodents carry uh, ticks and fleas, all kinds of vermin on them. You know, so these these guys are beneficial to the ecosystem because then we'll get overran by all these rodents. And if anybody remembers history, rodents they caused the Black Plague. You know, like <laughs> they spread it. Right? Yeah, they they help spread spread it. So uh, yeah, it's just, they're just a beneficial member of our ecosystem, and you know, they probably do more for nature than a lot of human beings do. So because like venomous snakes like. Most other snakes, they eat like mice and other uh, vermin. Like if you saw a mouse in your house, you wouldn't be too happy about that either. Because these snakes help prevent that, right? Because that's just their natural diet. Mm -hmm. And so, what are some of the biggest threats to uh, venomous snakes or snakes in general? Uh, one of the biggest threats that we've seen to snakes is is probably the pesticides and herbicides that are that are put on the crops. You know, that's that's where it kind of starts because it starts killing off the uh, food that goes up the food chain, you know, so these animals are dying because they still have enough food and, and then uh, people killing them and, and, and taking their habitat. Habitat loss is probably the second biggest killer of them. So, so when you encounter a venomous snake, what is the snake going to do? Like, what is it going to try to do to defend itself? Well, usually what the snake tries to do uh, is they'll try to make themselves look big. Uh, you know, a lot of times, the, the, like the cotton mouth will, will ball up and open its mouth and show its big white mouth off. You know, that's why they call it the cotton mouth. Uh, copperheads, usually what they'll do is they'll, they'll kind of coil and stand up and just try and make themselves look big. And uh, that's, all of them, that's usually what they do, or they'll rattle, rattle the rattlesnakes will rattle their tails and, and try and make themselves look big too. Uh, but really, the, the, what they want to do is they want to get out of it there. Want to bail out of there and get like when we had the snakes out earlier. There's a bush right there next to your driveway, and first thing you want to do is just made a beeline for the bush before we got in the way. But yeah, a lot of times all they want to do is they uh, they want to get out of the situation and go hide, the same as everybody else does. Uh, a lot of people get bit because they want to mess with them when they're trying to get away, and that's how they get bit. So you obviously run the Show Me Show. So what are some upcoming dates for that? Uh, June 8th will be in Springfield, and then July uh, 19th, no, July 21st, right? July 21st, we'll be back in St. Louis. Uh, if I don't have work, I'll definitely be there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week. Yeah, this one's a striker. Watch that. Watch it.